Okay, can everyone see my screen now? All yep, good. We got it. Excellent. All right. Sorry, some technical difficulties here. So as I said, I am, uh, my name is Brian Roach. I am the current chair of the, uh, of the CPC. Um, John Simons currently serves as the vice chair after uh, many, many years uh, uh, as the chair. Um, and we've got a, a dedicated um, committee here. I really want to thank the committee and their efforts for everything they've done uh, for the past year, their perspective, their persistence, uh, meeting virtually. Uh, I'm often reminded by Tracy Watson um, that CPC, uh, the CPA, the funds are a gift to the taxpayers. Uh, and they can be taken away from the taxpayers if we're not good stewards of it, if we're not responsible with those taxpayer dollars. So I think that drives and, and informs a lot of our uh, discussions and decision making when we're making recommendations uh, to town meeting on the applications that come before us. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, the staff that's been really supporting us, uh, Dan Beckley and Jillian Brothers, uh, supporting me especially, uh, having only been chair for the last few months. Um, uh, I couldn't do any of the stuff that I've done without them. They, they certainly keep me, uh, keep me right on track and, uh, and, and keep me in, in line. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to thank Lori Burslav, uh, Suzanne Egan, and, and Lynn Savage for putting up with my dumb questions the past few months. Um, they've, been, they've been really, really helpful. Uh, so tonight, uh, the, I'd like to go over a, a few items, if I could. Um, for those of you who may not be aware, uh, this is the 20th anniversary of the CPA in North Andover. Um, I want to do a little bit of a look back and talk about some of the projects that we've, uh, we've been fortunate enough to be a part of um, and, and just kind of reflect on, on some of the success that we've had in this uh, uh, over the past two decades. Uh, I'll kind of go into dollars and cents of the CPA fund, where we stand today uh, and where we will stand after our recommendations. I'll discuss in more detail the actual proposals and, and the committee discussion around them. And if we have some time at the end, I'd like to spend a few minutes uh, looking ahead at some of the things I'd like to do uh, in between our funding cycles as we head into uh, the next year. 20 years of the CPA in North Andover. Um, North Andover was actually the second community in the Commonwealth to adopt the CPA legislation uh, at the 2001 annual town meeting. Uh, I, I wasn't around at the time, but I'm, I'm told that Bedford beat us by five days because of a freak snowstorm delaying our, our town meeting. Um, we were, however, the first community in the Commonwealth to appropriate funds, and that was for the acquisition of Carter Hill uh, for $1.51 million. Uh, in that time, uh, the taxpayers in North Andover have funded 136 projects, totaling nearly $41 million. Uh, and of that $41 million, 13 have come from the state matching uh, community preservation trust. Uh, so not an insignificant amount of money over this time. Um, I believe most of you are aware, but uh, CPA has uh, three main sources uh, of funding. A 3% tax surcharge on um, property tax bills uh, with the state match uh, in funds I just referenced, uh, as well as interest that grows on the, uh, on the balance that's in, in the town's fund. Uh, and we use those dollars to appropriate funds to projects across four main uh, categories, open space protection, uh, recreational land use, historic preservation, and affordable housing. And I think you'll see as over the last 20 years, um, we've, we've touched on every one of those aspects um, with, uh, with a diverse amount of funding. When you roll all that up, about 55% of, uh, of the funding has gone to open space and land for recreational use. And sometimes those go back and forth between the two. About a quarter of it's going to historic preservation and about 20% to affordable housing. Um, and you'll note in the recreation allocation, uh, a good chunk of that is, is tied up in the middle school fields project, uh, about 60% or so of that allocation. Um, it, you know, we're kind of beholden to the projects that come before us. Um, so I, I can't say that there's ever been a, um, a formal balance of where it should be. We have a 10% minimum threshold that needs to be met each year. Um, but we're, again, we're just reacting to the projects that come before us. That's one of the things we'll talk about a little bit later on is how we uh, be more proactive with identifying uh, projects that various stakeholders in town uh, are going to find important and, and those that can adhere to the master plan. Doing a slightly deeper dive on this, CPA in the last 20 years has currently protected more than 380 acres of uh, land that could have been otherwise available for development. Um, and that can come in the form of an outright acquisition. Uh, a partnership with a nonprofit 
or just a purchase of a conservation restriction. Um, and many of these properties that we've uh, really come to love across town uh, have been protected by, uh, by the use of taxpayer CPA dollars. Uh, we've done a tremendous amount of work in recreation fields uh, throughout the community. Um, almost every other, every recreational field that you'll see throughout town has in some way been impacted by CPA funds. I'd like to particularly point out the partnership with North Andrew Public Schools and local PTOs uh, for the master plan uh, renovation of all of every school playground. Um, this year will be the final year uh, of that program, as I'll talk about uh, in a few minutes. We've helped preserve the history throughout North Andover. You'll see a lot of our dollars have gone uh, to historic preservation. Um, we've got so much such deep history, uh, which I know the select board is, is very, uh, very proud of uh, here within town, whether it's the Stevens Estate or the Stevens Library or, or uh, Ridgewood Cemetery, uh, or even smaller venues like the uh, Parson Barnard House, uh, CPA dollars have touched uh, each and every one of them to preserve our history for future generations. And last, by no means least, uh, our affordable housing component um, has really, I find it to be one of the most uh, critical items of what we fund because it has a direct impact on, uh, on making the lives better of certain uh, members of our community. Um, so the work through the Housing Authority, uh, the work in partnership with the Affordable Housing Trust really has a direct impact on people's lives. And I, and I find that to be particularly compelling uh, with what we've done over the last 20 years. Moving on, let's discuss the current status of the fund. And I've, I've reviewed all these numbers with Lynn, uh, so these are as up to date as we have them. Uh, as of the end of February, we had about $10.8 million um, in, the, in the CPA fund. Uh, holding against that, we have some encumbrances um, totaling about $8.1 million, uh, which brings our net balance in the fund to uh, $2.7 million. Um, again, in the, those encumbrances, you know, a good chunk of the open space encumbrance is for the middle school fields. Uh, on the affordable housing front, um, the Housing Authority had a large project which we approved two years ago, uh, which was delayed due to, to the construction was delayed due to COVID. Uh, it was very difficult to get people in and out of uh, the residents' homes during COVID. Um, for projecting revenue uh, for the remainder of the fiscal year, we are projecting about $3.1 million from the various funds. That's uh, for the remaining uh, you know, few months of this fiscal year uh, and into next fiscal year. Uh, the interest on the fund and the state match. Uh, interesting to note, these numbers I think are a little bit uh, on the conservative side, but that's probably the way we should handle them. Uh, our state match this year, for example, was $590,000, uh, and we're anticipating our, our 21 revenue to be about $2.1 million. Um, either way, that will leave us uh, an available balance uh, to fund for this fiscal year of about $5.8 million. Our recommendation is 2.3. Uh, which would leave an ending balance uh, in the fund of about $3.5 million. Okay. Uh, I was anticipating somewhat of a slow year during, due to COVID, but um, we actually ended up getting uh, a dozen applications uh, across the spectrum of uh, recreation, historic preservation, uh, and affordable housing. Um, and the all told uh, came to just under uh, $3.2 million. Uh, when we reviewed these applications, uh, we unfortunately had to uh, remove two of them immediately. Uh, the Ann Bradstreet statue and the North Parish Witches sculpture uh, for about $800,000 uh, as they're ineligible for CPA funding. Uh, and that's because the historic preservation statute under the CPA does not allow for uh, any creation um, of, of a historic artifact only for acquisition or preservation. Um, and a, a third project, uh, which I will discuss in more detail, uh, the committee uh, decided was not quite ready uh, for this year's, um, uh, this year's funding cycle. Um, so as I mentioned before, the total uh, recommendation, recommended appropriations for town meeting are $2,317,254. Rolling it all together, about half of it is uh, allocated to historic preservation. Uh, and the remaining balance is split between recreation and affordable housing, which does get us to our 10% threshold because you combine the open space and recreation component together uh, need to get to uh, to 10%. So we are, are well within that that tolerance. Um, I'll stop anyone has any questions before I get into the into the projects uh, at this time. Good. Okay. Excellent. 
Um, first project up to discuss uh, the affordable housing trusts. Uh, this is a um, has been a recurring funding uh, that we started in fiscal year 2016 for the affordable housing trust. Um, not necessarily was dedicated to a specific project, but in order to help the trust maintain flexibility, uh, where we can only fund once a year and we're uh, subject to town meeting, uh, the, the trust needs to be able to react um, when situations dictate, when a property becomes available that perhaps they want need to be able to act on. Or as we saw this year, uh, when COVID-19 hit, um, the Affordable Housing Trust recognized that there was a need for emergency rental assistance. They were able to use CPA dollars uh, for that. Um, so that not only had a direct impact on, on those residents, um, but it also helped expose a need, and, and Laura explained this to us uh, you know, quite eloquently, that there was a really a need for long-term rental assistance. Um, so they were able to help in the short term, but now they're going to help plans uh, for down the road. Uh, and they also plan to start a first-time home buyer program uh, with some of these funds. So uh, this was unanimously approved uh, for recommendation by the committee. Uh, as I referenced earlier, the Playground Master Plan, this is the, uh, the final um, uh, installment of the Playground Master Plan for $200,000. Um, this will be for the renovation uh, at the Thompson and uh, ABECC. Um, this program began in 2015. Um, each year it's been around $200,000, uh, along with additional funding from the town, $50,000 uh, uh, for capital and $25,000 for annual maintenance. Um, this project has been well managed, well budgeted, uh, and well executed. Um, and I think what we're going to do after we get through um, you know, this year's appropriations is, is really do a, a, an autopsy on this overall program and see what went right, what we would do differently uh, down the road, and how it can be a, a roadmap for future partnerships with other stakeholders in the town. Uh, so I think this is a really, really good example and um, uh, something that, that, that shows well uh, throughout the community. Next on our list, uh, uh, the town manager came to us for uh, an $80,000 uh, application for a uh, housing consultant to study uh, North Andover's affordable housing goals. Um, uh, as she mentioned in her presentation to us, our, our uh, affordable housing gap has widened uh, with regards to 40B as new developments have come online. Uh, what this consultant would do is uh, help us with strategies for helping to close that gap and planning for the future, not just in the, the short-term immediate needs, but as the census dictates down the road for uh, 2030 and 2040, uh, as well as make some recommendations for uh, regional housing efforts to help achieve some cost savings um, uh, and some efficiencies there. Again, this one was also approved unanimously. North Andover Housing uh, Authority. I referenced a $1.4 million allocation for kitchen renovations from a couple of years ago. Um, they've come back to us for um, uh, roof repairs at Holds Terrace and entryway repairs at Fountain Drive, um, just, short, just shy of $400,000. Um, as you are likely aware, um, we worked with the former executive director on uh, commissioning a needs assessment for all of the housing authority properties. Uh, that was in fiscal year 2019, uh, CP, CPA dollars funded that study. Uh, and that study was presented to us this fall uh, by the new executive director, uh, Maggie Clary. Um, and it was comprehensive. It really did a deep dive into every single one of the properties, what their needs are gonna be. And like we've done with other projects, this will develop a roadmap for how we maintain uh, the housing authority properties. Um, so these two projects are uh, very consistent with what was discovered in that needs assessment, um, you know, and, and were, were found to be prioritized and urgent. So uh, the committee unanimously approved uh, these recommendations. Next, another historic project, and um, this is the uh, Bradstreet School Memorial. This is for supplemental funding, the amount of $21,000. Uh, this project was originally approved in, uh, in 2014, uh, prior to the Bradstreet School being demolished. Uh, the, the stones were preserved, and I think they're actually sitting over uh, by the middle school now, uh, with the intent that they were going to go over on the um, school administration building. Um, some delays to construction, and, and in the interim time, the um, Ann Bradstreet Girl Childhood Center uh, was conceived and, and built. Uh, and the historical society said uh, it makes all the sense in the world to um, use this both as a uh, memorial as well as a, uh, a sign right there at the Bradstreet School. So 
Uh, this led to a more robust memorial um, and some increased costs, which is why they came back to us for, for additional funding. Uh, but I think we'll all be excited to, to see this project um, get underway. Uh, this was approved unanimously. Um, the next project here we're particularly excited about. Um, this was brought to us by, uh, by Gene Enright and Peter Boynton, our harbor master. Um, but I learned something. We have a harbor master, uh, which, as Peter pointed out uh, in his presentation, uh, mainly consists of, of helping pick up the trash between Stevie's Pond and its causeway. Um, this project is in the amount of three hundred thousand dollars, and uh, this is going to be for a complete overhaul of what is the primary access point uh, to Wire Hill and, and the trail network. Uh, improved parking, improvements in the causeway, cleaning up of invasive species of plants, and, and, and um, rehabilitating all of those. Uh, the causeway bridge itself is actually historic, uh, built in 1848. Uh, this does not contemplate restoration of that, uh, but some erosion control measures for the, uh, for the uh, rail easement that passes over it. Um, this has a, a real opportunity to be transformative. One of the things that I thought was really um, an interesting takeaway from their presentation is they referred to the entry experience that I believe it's the Greenbelt Association uses, maybe the trustees uh, with regards to their properties, that the presentation, the initial presentation when you're entering into one of these properties impacts behavior. If it looks poorly maintained, if there's trash uh, around uh, at the outset, uh, folks are less inclined, frankly, to take care of it when they are on the land. Um, conversely, if you if it's well maintained with plenty of trash barrels and, and opportunities to, to, to have it um, stay clean, uh, people are far less likely to treat it poorly. Um, and, and, and that really struck. Uh, for, uh, we've all used this parking lot at one time or another. Uh, this is going to be really, really uh, beneficial for residents. Uh, with one of our members uh, noting, this is exactly the kind of project the CPC funds were intended for. Uh, so this was approved unanimously and enthusiastically. Tying into uh, that, the Gateway project uh, almost inadvertently is the proposal for the North Andover Rail Trail Phase 1 uh, brought to us by Andrew Shapiro. Uh, this is for the amount of $30,900 uh, and it is contingent upon successful receipt of a mass trails grant, which they have already applied for, uh, about $83,000. Um, they're expecting to hear back from Mass Trails, uh, hopefully by June. There was no real formal date, um, so it's expected to be after town meeting. Um, but that would be for the surveying and engineering work in this first phase of the rail trail, which is about 1.3 miles connecting from the high school uh, down to uh, Marble Ridge Station um, and running right through, uh, right along Stevens Pond. Um, this has an opportunity to connect to a number of different trail networks within the town. Uh, and, and increase accessibility uh, into some of the denser parts of town from perhaps some of the more remote parts. Uh, and that would be even further enhanced by phase two, uh, which would follow the, um, uh, the utility easement all the way out to uh, Blue Ridge Road. Um, this was, uh, was also approved unanimously. Uh, near the home stretch here, uh, we have, uh, this is the first of two proposals that came to us from uh, Ridgewood Cemetery, and this is the amount of uh, just over $660,000. This is phase nine uh, of their historic uh, landscape master plan. Um, this will include some uh, landscape work around the Marble Ridge Gardens, some expansions of the cobble paths, um, as well as restoration of a storage building and the historic purse house. Um, I can't say enough good things about the, Red, the Ridgewood Cemetery Board um, and, and how they have um, wrung every dollar possible uh, out of um, the, the, the money they've been granted. They really make it go that extra mile, um, both with uh, their work and the work of their team. Um, they landed, as I'm sure you all know, on the, the National Register of Historic Places in 2016, and this historic landscape master plan was, uh, was a key part of making that possible. Um, so we're really excited to continue um, the, the renovations that have been happening over at Ridgewood. And it was improved unanimously. Ridgewood also came to us regarding uh, a, a significantly older burial ground. Uh, the second burial ground on Academy Road uh, was previously owned by the North Parish Church. In late 2020, they transferred ownership uh, to Ridgewood. Um, for, as I would say, they're bringing in the pros uh, at, at taking care of this type of property. Um, so Ridgewood is, is coming to us for about just shy of a half a million dollars 
for a one-time refurbishment of the second burial ground. Um, this would be uh, where Ridgewood is a place to uh, enjoy and perhaps to mourn. Uh, second burial ground is about history. It's about our community history. Um, so they're going to really take this opportunity to completely renovate um, uh, the burial ground. Uh, they're going to use technology such as ground penetrating radar to help identify any remains that may be there. Uh, they're going to make the property more accessible, uh, which I think would be a great thing for uh, for the younger school age children uh, in town to learn more about this uh, this particular property. It's about 700 people uh, who are uh, interred here at the second burial ground, uh, and some really historic uh, figures within the town. So, uh, the Ridgewood Association expects this to take about 24 months, uh, and, and it'll be completed. And this was again approved unanimously uh, within the town. Uh, within the community. Finally, uh, we received a proposal from uh, uh, Michael Smolak for just over $60,000 for uh, passive recreation on a portion of the Smolak Farms property. Um, the idea would be to, to clear some trails and add interpretive signage to the various uh, aspects of the property, which is already protected under an agricultural trust. Um, there was also a thought here of, of, of that being a place for the uh, high school cross country team to train and perhaps even have meets. For this one, uh, there were still some unanswered questions. Uh, Mr. Smolik was very forthcoming and, um, and appreciate his efforts, but um, the, the two biggest concerns the committee had were with regard to guaranteeing public access at all times, um, you know, whether it's through an easement or, uh, or other uh, guarantee of public access. Uh, Mr. Smolak didn't say that he was not willing to do that. It just was not quite ready yet. Um, and there was also concern from within the committee of the perception of taxpayer dollars uh, potentially drawing traffic and benefiting a private business. Um, there's nothing that would prevent that uh, from an eligibility standpoint, but there certainly was um, a, a concern from the committee. Um, so we felt this one was not quite ready yet. Um, and this is one of those ones, that, as I referenced, that maybe we'll do a more of a pre-application process and work with the applicant and see if there's a better path forward uh, to, to, to work through uh, his proposed project. Um, and that is all the projects that we evaluated uh, for this year. Looking ahead, um, as a reference, a couple of initiatives and some of the things we'd like to spend uh, some time on while we're not evaluating proposals. Um, one of those is creating awareness, uh, broader awareness in the community of the CPC. Uh, in the CPA, uh, everyone sees that you know three percent surcharge on the property tax bills, or maybe they don't. Um, but we want to make sure they know where those those funds are going. Uh, we've already started work on a, a map on the town website that highlights all the CPA projects. We can add more information to that uh, and make it a little bit more robust. Um, we're going to be adding hopefully signage throughout the the community. We've already approved uh, signage to go on all the playground projects. We'd like to add more signage to um, the, the uh, open space properties that have been permanently protected. Uh, we'd include QR codes on the signage that could link right back to the website so people can learn more about where their CPA dollars uh, have gone. Um, I think we'd like to also refine our process a little bit more. Uh, as I was going back and, and doing research for the, for the last 20 years on, on the, the history, um, you know, going through old town meeting notes and minutes and trying to figure out exactly what was proposed and what happened. I think we have a, a little bit of work to do there to, to clean some of that stuff up. Um, so I think I'd like us to, to, to focus on that, at least going forward. Um, I'd like to work on a, a pre-application process, as I referenced, uh, in the fall prior to our funding deadline, um, where we can really work with applicants to help them refine their presentations, answer questions in advance. Uh, before we you know, get quite right, right up to our funding deadline, our application deadline rather, and our quick funding meetings and then on to you guys and on to town meeting, um, the, the more we can stretch that process out, I think the, uh, the better the applications will be. Uh, and lastly, I'd like to find ways for us to increase communication through all the stakeholders in the town uh, to make sure that we're um, seeking out and identifying any projects that could be eligible and quality projects for, uh, for the CPA uh, that the town wants. The town wants to see. Uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're so beholden to what comes before us. We want to make sure that we're allocating these dollars in the right way uh, and what the taxpayers would like to see. 